Hey, welcome to edX World and another video in the AS A level financial accounting series. This video is a continuation from the previous video on the cash flow statement. In the previous video, we've seen the format of the cash flow statement. And in this video, I'll, I'll show you an example and explain to you exactly how to analyze the question and prepare a cash flow statement. If you've not yet watched that video first, please do that. I'll provide the link in the description box below. Then this video will be more helpful for you. So here I have an example of a Cambridge past paper question. I have made some changes to the question so that I can explain some more adjustments to you. The question was a little simpler. I've made some changes. So let us analyze the balance sheet first. And when analyzing the balance sheet, I'll also tell you which part of the balance sheet is relevant for what type of activity when we're preparing the cash flow statement. If I start from my non-current assets, non-current assets at netbook value are given. Obviously, non-current assets have increased here from 224 to 259. It indicates that there are some purchases of new non-current assets, but I cannot put the difference directly in the cash flow from investing activities as purchase of non-current assets. Reason because there are certain adjustments for non-current assets. Whenever there is a balance sheet item and with the balance sheet item, there are certain adjustments given. You will have to prepare working notes to calculate the missing numbers here. If I see my adjustment number two and my adjustment number three, both are for non-current assets. How do we prepare the working note? We'll see that in a bit. Going ahead, I have my current assets. In, under my current assets, inventories have changed, trade receivables have changed. We will see that when we analyze the working capital in the cash flow from operating activities. Cash and cash equivalence, last year's was 14,000, this year's is zero, fine. If I go ahead, equity part, share capital has changed, share premium has increased. And at the same time, I can also see non-current liabilities, bank loan has increased. Now remember your equity and your non-current liabilities, these form a part of your capital structure. And in the previous video, I told you that capital structure changes will appear in the cash flow from financing activities. So whenever you're doing cash flow from financing activities, come back to this section, equity and non-current liabilities, analyze and put the numbers. You do not need to look at any other part of the balance sheet when doing cash flow from financing activities. After that, I have my current liabilities. That is also a part of working capital, which we will analyze when doing cash flow from operating activities. Let us also read our adjustments. First adjustment, profit from operations is directly given, which is good because if profit from operations is not given, you will have to calculate that. How do you calculate that? I already explained in the previous video that you'll have to take your differences in the retained earnings, add back all your appropriations and taxes. So you have to add back your general reserve, the transfer to general reserve, you'll have to add back dividends paid. You will have to add back the tax provision for the year and you will have to also add back any finance cost interest charges. That way you will be able to arrive at the profit from operations or operating profit. But in this question, it is directly given. The second adjustment says that there is a certain sale of non-current asset. The cost of the asset was 24,000. The accumulated depreciation on that asset was 19,000. So obviously the netbook value will be the difference, which is 5,000. Now that asset is sold for 8,000. Since the asset is sold at a price higher than the netbook value, there is a gain on disposal here, which we will consider in cash flow from operating activities. The third adjustment speaks about depreciation charge for the year. Fourth adjustment is on interest paid, which we will deduct in the cash flow from operating activities. Alternatively, you could do it in the cash flow from financing activities. IAS 7 allows you both the treatments. The next adjustment says that dividends paid during the year were 25,000. We will consider that as an outflow in the cash flow from financing activities. There was a proposed dividend of 30,000. You have to ignore this adjustment because when preparing the financial statements, proposed dividend is ignored and hence at the time of preparing cash flow statement, proposed dividend will be ignored again because it is not a cash transaction. No cash outflow has taken place for any proposed dividend. Taxation charge was 22,000. But if you read your balance sheet, current year's tax provision, it says there is closing balances 20,000. Why is there a mismatch? 22,000 is tax charge, but the closing balance is 20,000. It means the opening balance of 18,000 cannot be taken as tax paid during the year. We'll have to make a provision for tax account to calculate what amount of tax was actually paid during the year. So here we will have to make certain working notes, certain ledger accounts. How do you know what ledger accounts to make? See, whenever there's a balance sheet item and for that balance sheet item, there is an adjustment. Always make working notes for those items. So here I have non-current assets and I have taxation charge. So I'll make these two ledger accounts. 
and after that we will start preparing our cash flow statement so let me draw some t accounts i will start putting the figures in the non current asset account the balance brought down balance carried down i will write i will put the depreciation charge for the year now non current assets is mentioned at net book value in the balance sheet so the opening and closing balances are at net book value and hence i will also prepare my t account at net book value i will not prepare my non current assets like usual at cost i will prepare them at net book value so all my numbers will be at net book value so when i am writing the asset disposed of on the credit side i will again take the net book value once you put in all these entries you will realize that the credit side is greater than the debit side the difference between credit and debit will go as the purchase of new non current assets this will be useful when calculating cash flow from investing activities so i get my purchase of non current assets as 52000 as the balancing figure in the account next account that i'm going to prepare is the provision for tax account wherein i'll put the opening and closing balances i'll put the taxation charge on the credit side showing the tax provided during the year and then if you realize the credit would be greater than the debit the difference will go as tax paid during the year which will be useful towards the end of cash flow from operating activities So we have our tax paid as twenty thousand for the year. Now, in a situation where this adjustment was not given, the six adjustment was not given, then you would assume that the twenty thousand, which is the closing balance of provision for tax account in the current year, will be the tax provided during the year, and eighteen thousand, which is the opening balance in the taxation provision for tax account, that will be the tax paid during the year. That assumption is made when there is no adjustment for tax given, but only balance sheet item is there. we have calculated our missing numbers let us go ahead and prepare our cash flow statement so i will first begin with cash flow from operating activities under that i told you that step number 1 will be to start from your profit from operations so i will do that after step 1 our second step was to make adjustments for your non cash items the transactions that were there in the income statement but that do not have a cash effect in this question firstly i have the depreciation charge which was charged as an expense in the income statement deducted from profit from operations hence i will have to add back depreciation here to reverse the effect of depreciation i also have gain on disposal of asset which would have been credited to the income statement increased the profit from operations i will have to deduct that gain on disposal to reverse the effect of that transaction keep in mind one important point here where i've seen many students getting confused students think that since depreciation is an expense why is it added back here why it is isn't it subtracted and gain on disposal of non current asset why is it subtracted here Well, it, gain should be added, right? But understand that in this step, step number two, we are reversing the effect of non-cash items. Since depreciation was deducted earlier, we are adding it back. Gain on disposal was added earlier to the profits. We are deducting it now because this is cash flow statement. Any effect of non-cash transactions will have to be removed. After completing a step two, I'll go on to the step three, where I will consider all the changes in the working capital. In my working capital, I have inventory. i have trade receivables and i have trade payables if you remember from the previous video your increase in current assets will have to be deducted and decrease in current assets will have to be added your increase in current liabilities will be added back and decrease in current liabilities will be deducted so i'll be analyzing these three accounts from the working capital and i'll put the transactions in the cash flow statement I'm done with my step 3 here. If you still have doubts why were these three transactions deducted, please watch the previous video. I've explained in detail there. Step 4 is where we deduct our tax paid during the year and deduct the interest paid during the year. So I'll put these two transactions here in the cash flow from operating activities now. So this completes our cash flow from operating activities. All the transactions are here. 
We now need to take a total of all the figures starting right from profit from operations until interest paid and the net amount if it's positive that shows cash flow from operating activities during the year. If the net amount is negative, it will show the cash used in operating activities during the year. So as you can see here, our cash used in operating activities is at negative 35,000. Next, we will calculate our cash flow from investing activities. When doing your cash flow from investing activities, you always have to pay attention to the non-current assets section of the balance sheet and the investments. In this question, there are no investments. So let us put the transactions relating to the non-current assets here. We've already calculated our purchase of new non-current assets, sale of non-current assets, the sale proceeds received have been given in the question. So these two transactions, I will write it here and calculate the net cash flow from or net cash used in investing activities. So here we get cash used in investing activities as negative 44,000. Next, we'll go ahead and also do cash flow from financing activities. When we are at cash flow from financing activities, I told you always look at the capital structure, which is the equity section and your non-current liabilities. So my equity has increased from 180,000 to 210,000. That's an increase of 30,000 new shares have been issued. That's just the face value. Premium has also increased from zero to 15,000. So the shares were issued at a premium of 15,000. And apart from that, I can see that my bank loan has increased from 20,000 to 42,000. So fresh bank loan has been taken during the year. Let me put these three transactions in the cash flow statement. Apart from this, we also have payment of dividends during the year at 25,000. That will also be a part of your cash flow from financing activities. That will be an outflow. So let me record these dividends and after that I will take a total of all the figures to arrive at the net cash flow from or net cash flow used in financing activities. After the cash flows are calculated under the three activities, the next step is to take the total or the net of all the activities and to arrive at the net position, net cash position during the year. So I'll be taking a total of cash flows from all three activities to arrive at the net cash flow during the year. So the net cash used during the year was negative 37,000. The business has paid out cash during the year of 37,000. The next step is to add the opening cash and cash equivalence balance to the net cash used during the year to arrive at the closing cash and cash equivalence balance. Isn't it obvious if I take the opening cash balance if I add the net changes in cash to that opening balance, I will definitely arrive at my closing cash and cash equivalence balance. So I'll be adding the opening balance to arrive at the closing balance. So as per the cash flow statement, our closing cash and cash equivalence should be at negative 23,000. If we reconcile this with the balance in the balance sheet, we can see there's a bank overdraft of 23,000. So when this closing cash and cash equivalence as per the cash flow statement matches with the closing balance as per the balance sheet, it indicates that all transactions have been taken into account. There are no arithmetical errors and more or less your answer would be correct. I hope you enjoyed this video. You have understood how to prepare a cash flow statement. This topic I hope is much easier now compared to what it was before you watched the video. And this will surely help you in solving other questions from the past papers or from other textbooks. Many students find this topic really difficult. So please like the video, share the video so that this can reach maximum students. Maximum students should be able to benefit out of this. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.